Hey, I'm Frank Hawkins from Frank's Favorite Foods. Whether you're actually about to start your YouTube cooking channel or just wondering what it might be like, this is the video for you. In this video, I'm going to share the answers to five important questions anyone starting a YouTube cooking channel should know. But before I begin, let me give you just a little bit of background information. I've been in the restaurant business for over 25 years as chef and owner and started my YouTube channel on August 19th of 2020 after losing my job as a result of the COVID-19 virus. Just to be perfectly clear, I started my channel with zero experience and zero equipment. Well, I started with an iPhone 7 and a $25 tripod. Nevertheless, I was able to generate over a thousand subscribers and over 40,000 views in less than six months. And you can do the same if you apply the information I'm about to share with you. It's important that you know that I really, really enjoy cooking. If you don't love to cook, if you don't absolutely love cooking, this isn't the gig for you. I especially like coming up with recipes. In particular, one of my favorite things is seeing if I can recreate my favorite restaurant meals at home. So my point is I really like recipes. I like coming up with my own recipes and I like trying to figure out recipes that other people have created. And that leads me into question number one. Number one, what's the most important thing you'll need to get started? Do you have 25 solid recipes? At least in the beginning, it's all about your recipes. While you may be able to get your friends and family to watch and subscribe to your YouTube channel, the idea is to get people that you don't know to watch and subscribe. Now, while there are certainly exceptions, anyone who doesn't know you and clicks on your video for the first time is first and foremost looking for an exceptional recipe. So how solid are your recipes? Just because you think they're good doesn't necessarily mean that you should be making videos of them. You need to do your due diligence. Go on YouTube and see if there's an audience for the type of videos you wanna make. A solid recipe is one in which you have a high degree of confidence. One of my specialties is Maryland style lump crab cakes. Now I can't tell you how many videos I've seen of some dude making a Maryland style jumbo lump crab cake recipe that one has no lump crab meat in it and two has no Old Bay in it which is the essential ingredient for making a Maryland style crab cake. Now while that crab cake might have been just fine it wasn't what it claimed to be it wasn't a Maryland style jumbo lump crab cake so in my opinion the person making the video doesn't know what they're talking about. The thing is, it's really important that your audience be confident that you know what you're talking about. I've even made this mistake myself. I posted a recipe that I've been making for a long time and called it authentic when it actually was not and the YouTube foodie mafia let me know that it was not an authentic recipe. My point is, it's really important that your audience have confidence that you know what you're doing. Make the best possible recipe you can make. Don't make an average meatloaf. Don't make an average mac and cheese. There's plenty of that stuff all over the internet. Give people a reason to click on your video. Number two, what kind of video should you make? The easiest style to create, the easiest style of video to create is video text music. Now, that's where the camera is focused on the food, so you don't really have to worry about the person preparing the food, or the set, or even recording any audio. This format requires that you videotape the steps of the recipe, add text explaining the recipe, and then add background music. On the positive side, 
this format definitely makes it easy to get started. All you're worrying about is filming the food. So, you know, you don't have the distraction of a voice or a personality. So you're really focused on the recipe and the images. On the downside, a channel without a voice can feel rather impersonal. Without the voiceover, you don't have the ability to enhance the video with your personality. Another popular format, in fact, the one that I use is video voiceover. For this format, you film the steps of the recipe and then go back and just record your video voiceover. This style of video is relatively easy to create and just like the last style, focuses the viewer's attention on the food, not the person preparing the food. However, adding the voiceover allows you to communicate with your voice and personality. I like the fact that I can entertain and inform without having to be on camera. Now I'm going to add two tablespoons of butter. That's a voiceover. Another popular method is real-time cooking. This is what you're used to seeing if you're watching a cooking show on TV. In this method, the chef is preparing the food and explaining the recipe all at the same time. In my opinion, this is the most difficult video to create. Audio and video are being recorded at the same time. So if you have a mistake with either one, you have to redo both. So this is an example of like real time video where you're recording audio and video at the same time. And you've got to make sure you get this part right and the speaking's got to be right. And you know, you've got the whole set involved. So it's a lot. Whereas the previous two methods, the focus was primarily on the food. Here, you're focused on the food, the preparer, the set. So you've really got to pay attention to all that stuff. The, the recipe's got to be great, the presentation's got to be great, and the set's got to be great as well. It's a, it's a lot to pay attention to. But with that being said, if you're a person with a big personality, this style might be just right for you. I mean, can you really imagine Gordon Ramsay doing a voiceover video? He's got a big personality that's just right for that style of video. But for better or for worse, we're not all Gordon Ramsay. It's not uncommon for creators to use elements of each of those different styles within one video. But I think if you're about to start a channel, it would be a really good idea to figure out which style suits you the best. Question number three, how do you get people to watch and subscribe? Even if you have the best recipes, even if you're extraordinarily lucky and you have this dazzling personality, you're still gonna need to figure out a way to get people to watch your videos. I started my channel on August 19th and by September the 1st, I had exhausted all my friends and family with respect to having them subscribe and watch my videos. I sat at 42 subscribers for over a week. The thing is, if you don't figure out how to promote your videos, your channel's not gonna go anywhere. YouTube promotes videos that grow organically. So if you can have, if you can figure out how to jumpstart your video on your own, if you can show YouTube that the video's got some traction and that it's growing, then something called the YouTube algorithm kicks in and your video is actually exposed to a lot more viewers. So you've gotta help people find your videos. The good news is there are platforms like Facebook, Reddit, and Quora that are communities that you can engage in where you can share your content, share your videos, and subsequently 
drive traffic to your YouTube channel. I've had the most success using a platform called Reddit. Dubbed the a front page of the internet, Reddit is a platform of various discussion groups. Um, groups on literally anything from chicken wings to politics to marijuana to wedding cake. So the thing is, it's, um, it makes it a little easier to find an audience for the kind of content you're creating. As a member of the Reddit community, you engage, share your content, comment on other people's content, and in this way you're able to drive traffic to your own site. Many of the sites allow you to actually post a video, if not post a recipe and a link to the video. Now it's not that Reddit is some kind of a secret, it certainly isn't, <clears throat> but I don't think that people understand exactly what it is and how it allows you to target any specific um, niche, whether it be you know cooking or anything. Question number four, do I need to be a tech genius? Absolutely not. While I do have some experience with music recording software, before starting my YouTube channel, I had zero experience with video, photography, thumbnails, or social media. I think the tech aspect of YouTube scares a lot of people off. You know, how do you know what to do? Well, honestly, just about every step of the journey has been documented by somebody on YouTube. You'll be using apps on your phone to create things like photographs and thumbnails and video. You'll need to learn how to set up and manage your own YouTube channel. How to shoot and edit video with your phone or maybe later with a camera. You'll need to learn how to create thumbnails. Those are the little pictures that get people excited about watching your videos. And you'll need to learn how to navigate all the different social media platforms but you don't have to figure all that stuff out on your own. There's a YouTube video for all of it. I find some smart, savvy 22 year old and let her explain it to me. Certainly there's lots of free information available on YouTube, but even more information and services are available if you're willing to spend a little bit of money. You can get coaching on everything from marketing to shooting video, literally just about anything. There's even a company out there that for a price will guarantee your subscribers. So you really don't have to do any of it alone if you don't want to. And finally, question number five, how do you go about making money from YouTube? What I wanna share with you now is how the ad revenue works from YouTube. How do you actually get paid? Well, and this is just a very basic, explanation. First of all, you have to uh, meet two specific thresholds. Uh, your channel is eligible for monetization once you have at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. So that means 1,000 people have to have signed up for your channel and your channel must also have a total of a cumulative 4,000 hours of watch time. The most basic explanation is advertisers will pay to put their ads on your videos and YouTube will split that revenue with you. YouTubers are paid per 1,000 views. So how much do you get paid? Well, it depends on the audience. An audience of 13-year-old uh, gamers, uh, that would probably pay less than the audience for say 45 to 50 year old men. So how much? I've heard of advertisers paying as much as $30 per 1,000 views and as little as 25 cents per 1,000 views. So here's a really basic example, you know, detailing how much you actually could make. So let's say 
that you made a video and in the month of December that video was viewed 10,000 times. And let's say that you, there's a deal with an advertiser who's willing to pay $20 per 1,000 views. So if you do the math, that means the income for that video would be $200 for the month of December. And you'd split that with YouTube, so you'd make $100. Now I get that that doesn't sound like a lot of money, but if you go and look at some of the people you're watching on YouTube, and even, if, even after their videos have just been up for a few hours, some of them have hundreds of thousands of views. So you can see that there's definitely some money to be made. Uh, Many YouTubers generate income through something called affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is where you work with a larger company, someone like Amazon, and you recommend certain products, and in return, Amazon pays you a small commission for people linking, uh, linking through your website to make the purchase on Amazon. Certainly once you've gotten yourself established on YouTube, there are opportunities for paid promotion and sponsorship as well. One of the things that I uh, thought was sorely missing from the information I gathered as I was getting ready to do my YouTube channel was how long does it take before you can make some money? So let's talk about that. It took me a little less than six months and a little over 40 videos to get to 1,000 subscribers. I expect to be monetized at around uh, 55 videos. So, you know, some people do it faster, some people do it slower, but I'm, that's, that's how long it's taken me. If your initial audience is your friends and family, your channel is gonna grow at a slower rate than someone who comes to YouTube with a large following. That only makes sense. But the important thing is, no matter the size of your initial audience, if you've got good content and you're willing to put the effort into getting that content out there, anyone, anyone has the ability to grow a YouTube cooking channel. So in closing, I'd like to share this. You know, it's funny how things work out. I certainly never meant to lose my job. But if I hadn't, I wouldn't have embarked upon the YouTube channel. And honestly, it's been uh, just an exceptional experience. By no means has it been easy. It's difficult to come up with fantastic recipes. It's difficult to come up with original ideas and you know to keep them interesting. But this whole process of figuring it out and you know. Um, the process of having to figure it out for myself has been very, very rewarding. And the same opportunity exists for you. This is Frank from Frank's Favorite Foods. I'm looking forward to seeing your videos. Thanks.